Chinese President Xi Jinping is now wrapped up his three-day meeting with Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin by pledging to shape a new world order. Yeah, and listen to this language. Xi told Putin that they are driving changes not seen in a century. As the world dumps the U.S. dollar, more and more countries are turning to the Chinese yuan. Last week, it was Brazil. And now Malaysia has announced its plans. Malaysia wants to set up an Asian monetary fund. And China supports the idea. But what purpose will it serve? It has two goals. Number one, replace the US dollar with an alternative currency. And number two, reduce reliance on the International Monetary Fund. China and Malaysia want to build an alternative to the IMF. They want to kill two birds with one stone, create an Asian IMF. In Russia, for instance, the Chinese currency has already replaced the dollar. The yuan is now the most traded currency in Russia. So Russia is shifting. So are some ASEAN countries like Indonesia, Vietnam and Cambodia. They're ditching the dollar. They're settling trade in local currencies. The Chinese yuan is going places and it's finding takers. The American dollar is losing friends. Steve, are they ready for this? China is now trying to replace the U.S. dollar uh, with their currency in global trade. What do you think of that story, uh, Steve? Well, China, for several years, has made very clear, along with the Russians, they want to downgrade the dollar because they think that will enhance their power around the world. And certainly the way we've treated the dollar over the year has gone in that direction. However, people are not going to trust the Chinese yuan. You may get these one-off deals like they're doing with the French, but China does not have real capital markets. China has capital controls. And so in terms of currency, people are going to prefer the dollar to the yuan. And uh, so in that, in that sense, uh, I think uh, we've got some time to get our house in order. But on the other hand, people do believe a little bit of, of Xi's brokering of the Iran-Saudi Arabia deal not too long ago. He is trying to portray himself as being a, a, a world leader. Right. Now, it's not that credible in, in the Western world, but it is becoming more credible in, in, in developing countries. And that's really uh, the audience he's aiming at. And Ambassador, what do you make of the release, uh, the joint statement Putin and Xi release um, after their meeting, effectively calling the U.S. and its allies a major security threat in Asia? Um, we know that there's a debate over the South China Sea, that there's this kind of uh, potential war with Taiwan hanging in the balance between China and that nation. Uh, people today recognizing more and more in deep trouble. They're very, very anxious about what's happening around the world. The seizure of that journalist is one example, but also China is now trying to secure the South China Sea, which is an international waterway. And so uh, everything this country is doing is just feeding what uh, the, our adversaries think is a declining power. And yes, we did respond to Ukraine, but we're not supplying enough uh, weaponry so they can throw out the Russian invaders. Uh, so uh, Putin is getting a second chance there. And the Chinese look at that and say the U.S. does not have the staying power that it had after World War II. And that's a very dangerous situation. In fact, Brazil and China have already struck a deal to bypass the dollar when paying for trade goods, which is a major milestone in Beijing's long-term plans to establish its own currency, the, the yuan, as the dominant international currency. It's very convenient uh, for every nation to use the U.S. dollar as its settlement uh, mechanism. Uh, however, as I said earlier, the substantial increase in U.S. interest rates in the last six months has really brought home to uh, emerging economies in particular that have dollar-denominated debt uh, that there's a significant risk in, in being overly dependent on the U.S. dollar for uh, their reserves, for their uh, trade settlements. And so that's the basis on which we're seeing this BRICS concept emerge right now. That's right. why we're seeing it today as opposed to a year ago. The Chinese have, of course, long aspired to uh, develop a digital yuan as an alternative mm -hmm. trading currency. China feels that the United States is trying to contain it. It's trying to stop China's rise. It's trying to stop China from being a player. And of course, that doesn't go very well in China. On the other hand, we in the United States were concerned about China's growth. And so we have aligned ourselves with, with, with Pacific countries, Australia, Japan, et cetera. And we are tr trying to figure out ways to, to stop China's rights, to be honest. The, the relationship between the U.S. and China is, is falling precipitously. Mm. It's going to continue to fall, frankly, until a couple of things happen. One is either 
some extraordinary leadership in, in China and or in the U.S. And frankly, I don't see that happening. In the bid to strengthen ties, South Africa's governing party, the African National Congress, also known as the ANC, has sent senior officials to Russia to discuss reshaping of the global order with the Russian President Vladimir Putin. The Russian President also signed a new foreign policy which aimed at curtailing Western dominance.